Red. Oh my god, it's so hard to focus on command. For realsies this time. This is for all, all the marbles. Every single marble in the entire world, this is it. This is it. Last Christmas, I bought myself one of these. Yep, finally time for me to stop being a serial procrastinator and actually do something with it. Now first, for anyone who's never seen one of these, it's a Star Wars Force Trainer toy. It displays this little hologram and walks you through a few different Star Wars scenes, like the iconic lifting the X-Wing out of the void, or the slightly less iconic droid, um, bowling. <laughs> The twist is that you put this headset on and then the headset reads your mind. And the harder you focus, the better you do the tasks on the toy. Now to be clear, this is not like that stupid Domino's app where you squint really hard and you look like you're constipated and then magically Domino's takes two hours to deliver you the wrong pizza. So I tried really hard to come up with an idea. You know, eating lunch, thinking of ideas, petting my cat Beverage, I go Beverage, thinking of ideas spiraling into an existential crisis, thinking of ideas. Finally, my girlfriend took pity on me and she said, why don't you use an eye tracker and the headband to draw stuff with your mind on MS Paint? That would be pretty funny. And I was like, what, that just popped into your head? Really, are you the idea genie or something? <sighs> yeah, that would be pretty funny. Cause it's content. So how am I going to turn this into drawing on MS Paint with my mind? Here's how. First, I'll have an eye tracker set up to move the mouse cursor with my eyes. This part is pretty straightforward, not much else to say here. Next up, the Force Trainer toy. Now this toy uses Bluetooth, so I thought I'd be able to just send data over Bluetooth. Ha! Nope. My computer thought it was a pair of Bluetooth headphones. <laughs> I learned that most people end up breaking these open and soldering some wires onto the circuit board so that they can slurp the data up onto an Arduino. Now see, I'm a software person. I love software, I love algorithms, I inject lead code questions directly into my blood. Before starting this project, I literally could not recognize a soldering iron. Now luckily, one of my buddies had a 30 something dollar soldering iron lying around that I could borrow, and I have this old motherboard hanging up on my wall because I thought it looked cool. So, I mean, it'll be fine. I'll just practice on the motherboard for a little bit. I'll solder some wires. Look at how hard could it be? I'll pipe the data to an Arduino, I'll clean it, and I'll pass it to a Python application on my computer. I decided to also set up some speech recognition software so that I can use my voice to tell my computer what color I want and when I'm done with my masterpiece. Obviously, the final step is to rig my Python application to open up an MS Paint window for me automatically and do all the setup. The idea is to literally not touch the computer after I hit run on the Python application. And that's the plan. First up, solder time. Well, okay, actually the first step is to go to Home Depot and get some wire. Ask for assistance. They don't even give you an option. <laughs> They're just like, I think you're gonna need assistance. Just ask for it already. Okay, okay, now it's solder time. By the way, I'm just going to reiterate that my soldering here is offensively bad, so just, just a warning. The two components I had to solder were the component mark T and the ground. The T-pin passes data, and the ground makes sure I don't electrocute myself. I think. By some miracle, I did not fry the board. But my girlfriend did fry her arm on the soldering iron holder while filming. Sorry, honey. Now the next step was wiring it up to the Arduino, which by comparison is literally so easy beverage could have done it. Beep, 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 Arduino cat, beep, beep. Wiring up ground. Beep, beep, beep. 
The next step was parsing the data out of the EEG headset. I thought this was gonna be so hard. Turns out, no, it's a, it's a breeze. The EEG chip in this toy is developed by a company called Neurosky. And Neurosky is so loosey-goosey with their IP that they literally published a 17-page paper detailing the protocol that they use for their data. After the Arduino code was finished, I wrote a Python application to receive the Arduino data and parse out the attention value, which is a number from 1 to 100, representing how concentrated you are. Okay. Yeah, I think I got it. Okay, so you can see on screen already, attention is starting to populate. Your brain is full of billions of tiny neurons, and they form a vast network that communicate with electrical impulses. These are called brain waves. Brain waves can occur at different frequencies and indicate different levels of brain activity. Now trust me, there is a ton of science I could talk about here, but I am so not qualified to talk about it. We can just say, in general, higher frequency brain waves means more concentrating. Unless the frequency is too high, then you get into seizure territory, but like, I'm gonna be honest, I don't plan on having a seizure for this video. Although, I guess anything is possible. The Star Wars Force Trainer is what's known as an EEG. Now don't get me wrong, this thing was 50 bucks, and it is absolutely not anywhere near as accurate as like professional lab equipment that can cost thousands of dollars. But I mean, come on, like 50 bucks, are you kidding me? For a fully functioning EEG? That's less than the cost of this Fortnite Nerf gun I found at my local Target. $53? Yeah, this Fortnite game is poppin'. And yes, I did buy it. Essentially, the headset's looking for indicators like high-frequency brainwaves, and if they find those indicators, the attention level goes up. Easy! Easy peasy! Oh my god, it works! Holy crap! I turned it on, and it's giving me a stream of ones and zeros! Next, I decided to tackle the eye tracker. For this, I found an application called Gaze Pointer. This application uses a webcam to track your eyes and control the mouse. Now, most eye tracker software costs money and also uses special cameras with near-infrared visibility to perform eye tracking, but as those sketchy sellers on Wish.com say, it's... it's good enough for... um... it's good enough. The final piece of the puzzle was the speech recognition and MS Paint automation. Now luckily, MS Paint is a rudimentary piece of very simple and elegant web application. So, it was pretty easy to write the code to automate some of the actions, like changing the paintbrush color or saving the picture. I used a speech recognition package called Speech Recognition. Very creative. Wow, very yes, creative. Give multiple That's claps so creative. For the author wow, of this Python man, this guy is it. so inventive. Someone give this guy an award. That's just an amazing name. Which calls the Google Speech API to detect words in an audio clip. So they're finally here, performing for you. If you know the words, you can join in too. Put your hands together if you want to clap as I take you through this monkey rap. Here, here, here we go. Now while I was working on this, I also thought it might be fun to randomly generate titles for these art pieces. So I came up with a bunch of art title formats, and I found an API which will return random words matching the part of speech that you tell it. For example, you can tell it to give you a noun, and it'll give you a random noun. At least I thought I found an API to do that. Turns out this feature has been broken for like three years. I found an online thread from the API's author and just, just listen to this. Totally not a fake email at gmail.com writes, it doesn't seem to matter if I use the exclude part of speech option at all. Same day, Mr. API author at api.com writes, unfortunately, We've had to temporarily turn off the part of speech parameter to handle a bug. I hope that we will have it working again soon. Totally not a fake email at gmail.com writes, Ah, I see. If I could ask, and forgive me if this is already answered somewhere else, but if I need a list of random nouns, is it necessary then to use the exclude parameter to exclude all other options? May 12th, 2021. Random third party at gmail.com says, Oh, has the include exclude part of speech parameter been enabled again? May 12th, 2021, same day, Mr. API at api.com responds, 
Sadly, not yet. Soon, I hope. Thank you for your patience. May 29th, 2022. Mr. API at api.com says, and I am, I cannot make this up. Hi folks, so sorry for the delayed reply. I moved a few weeks ago and am still catching up. My man, have you been moving for two years? Anyways, I know that they're trying their best. I don't want anyone to go try to find this thread or harass the person. I just thought it was super funny. And I was able to solve my problem. That didn't end up working, so I found some word banks online for different parts of speech, and I set it up to just grab random words from those word banks instead. And then I told my therapist about how my lack of faith in other people was strengthened by this completely inconsequential moment of my life. And she told me that was unhealthy. By the way, this was by far the best choice that I made this entire project. Just check out some of these banging names. And after that, I was done. Now, of course, I was super excited to see how it all came together. So here's a test run. <laughs> Oh my god. Fantastic. Okay. Um, black's fine. We'll start with the, we'll start with the stick figure. Here's where I make my first mistake. <laughs> See, saying the word oh, black cool. triggers the speech recognition to try and change my color to black, even though it already is. The next issue I encountered was that if I somehow unclicked without unfocusing, like changing the color since the automation auto clicks on stuff, I would have to unfocus before I could refocus and click the mouse again. I think I can solve this in a few different ways. My immediate thought is to just wrap all of the voice commands in some code that always unclicks the mouse after it's done. Red. And the final issue is that I noticed that some voice commands would not get picked up, just period. It turns out that the fan in my apartment is actually loud enough that the voice command code thought I was still talking because it was over the noise threshold, leading to inconsistency in voice commands. I actually ended up solving this later by just turning my fan off. Sometimes simpler is better. By the way, you see me looking off to the side a lot, that's actually because I'm looking at the debugging log that you can see on screen right now. I had it up on my second monitor to scan for issues. And yes, I did name the speech recognition Jarvis. My introduction to Iron Man's robot assistant was obviously as an impressionable small child, and it stuck. Yellow now. I think that's good. Turning off the headset. Save and exit. Okay, this one's pretty straightforward. I think it's pretty good. It's she. This lady is a guest, and she's exploding. I, there's not. <laughs> there's not much more to say. I think this is by far the best painting I've done so far. This is a masterpiece. I'm gonna sell this as an NFT. I also got my girlfriend to give it a try, and the results were just as good. What? So like a, what's a fire system in hell. Okay. Okay, red. Go the hot way, go the other way. No! <laughs> No, it was working. Care to uh, elaborate at all on any of your drawings? Um. Well, it said daintily systemized beneath reality. So we're in hell, and I drew drew a, a dainty librarian. <laughs> I see it. Um. And it systemized. I was trying to draw a filing cabinet. Do you see it? Yeah. There's lots of lines that are parallel almost. Yeah. Those are the this files. This is what... Because it's beneath reality. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Now I want to play a fun game. Here's a few examples of art that I've made with my mind control rig. 
leave a comment of what you think I was trying to draw, and if you guess it right, I will literally Venmo you $10 because there is no shot that anybody will guess these correctly. So that's what I wasted three weeks of my life doing. If you like this, consider leaving me a thumbs up or subscribing. I obviously am a very new YouTube channel, so it helps quite a bit to both my mental health and to the health of the channel to even just leave a thumbs up. And finally, I'm happy to announce that this video is sponsored by me and my own money, and that's it. Okay, 